What if we combined this, 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 colored pencil, and watercolor? Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind Law Cree Fine Art. You guys have asked me to work in watercolor for years and I kept saying it's not for me. I don't think it's for, oh my gosh, I love it. I'm in love, absolutely in love. I'll let you know when the wedding is. Turns out the brand of watercolor you use makes a difference. Knock off Crayola does not have the same pigmentation that professional watercolors use. Who knew? I should have known. Today I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite paintings. I, I just, I, I'm so, it's on my wall. You can't see it, but it's actually hanging on my wall back there. That's how much I love it. It's already framed and up. So let's go ahead and get into this project. I will tell you what I used, how are you layered, how, what? That didn't come out, that, that was supposed to be English. I don't think it was English. What I used, how I layered them, and share some of the techniques I used here. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where you've got the three hour version of this if you would like to follow along. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my lessons. I've got over 300 available instantly when you sign up, even though the screen is lying to you and saying 200. It's increased. There are 300 available instantly when you sign up and a new one every single week and in multiple mediums. If you want to see what I have available, you can head over to my Patreon video library. The link to that along with the free two hour colored pencil demonstration is available for you there. For this project, I drew the fox out separately on my Wacom tablet. You could use another piece of paper. The point is draw it on something other than your finished watercolor paper. If I had to keep erasing on this, I would have damaged the paper. I would have either left a bunch of smudge mark place, marks places that would have been hard to remove or just roughed up the paper in areas I wouldn't have wanted that in. So I drew it separately and then used a projector in this case, because it is so large, to project it onto my watercolor block. This is the art Arches Hot Press Watercolor Block, the 140 pound, pound, which is a bit on the light side. So the amount of water I'm using, it did buckle pretty badly. And I ended up just removing it from this pad and taping it to another board so that I could kind of dry it back more flat. It, it came out mostly flat in the end, but it was buckling pretty bad with the amount of water I used here. So if you're going to use the watercolor block on something this size, I probably would go with a 300 pound. This was a bit lightweight. I'm using the Schmincke Watercolors which have incredible pigmentation here. Now, you wanna know what your goals are in a piece before you started. Here, I knew that I was going to go on top of this with colored pencil. So that pretty much told me, don't waste too much time perfecting the base layers that I'm doing in watercolor. Let the base layers just get rid of the, the parts that would take too long in colored pencil, just filling in these solid bases. Get that done with watercolor, but then come back through with the final, de the more refined details with colored pencil. The goal here is to make my life easier. It wasn't just because I wanted to mix these two mediums, it was because I actually wanna, what can I use the best of both worlds on to save time? You do wanna make sure you're doing this in the right order. I wanna do all of the watercolor areas first before I start with the colored pencil because the colored pencils are wax and oil based, this obviously water based, so this is not gonna be archival on top of colored pencil, but the colored pencil on top of this, totally safe, totally archival, so make sure you're doing that in the right order. Now that, taking my own advice here about knowing I was going on top with colored pencil, let's not waste too much time given that on the watercolor stage, this was hard for me at this stage because it looks terrible. By the time I'm done with this door, and the same with the fox, I really had to stop myself and remind myself regularly, you're coming back on top of this with colored pencil. Don't try to finish it. You know, don't waste the time putting too much detail with the watercolors knowing that the colored pencil is going to make, it, it'll be easier to get that level of detail with colored pencil. One of the things I love so much about colored pencil and watercolor versus colored pencil over ink tents, the colored pencil sticks better, I find, to watercolor than it does to ink tents. But both could technically be used. I've splattered some paint on the bottom to make the dirt look kind of sandy there. Now that, that color swatch you see to the side, I've made that, and this is the only medium that I really find this to be super useful for. I made a color swatch so it, and it lines up with where what colors are where in my palette because sometimes in your palette, the pans, it's very hard to tell what that color is going to look like wet. This, I've got the numbers of each color that I used along with what the light fast rating is so that I can choose just light fast colors. There's maybe two colors in my set that are not light fast. So this way I can use those ones, the non light fast ones I do keep, I use them for practice practicing different techniques, but on a finished piece, I want to stick with those light, fast colors, and that's what that, is, that chart is doing. 
you can see the colors on the with these color the, I can't talk the colors with these watercolors is just so vibrant it's really incredible that was such a change from what I'd experienced before because the paints I'd used before they were like praying I think there was some generic uh um, Crayola, the word just slipped my mind there. I've, I've used a few different types of watercolor and none of them that I use, well, none of them are professional, first of all, but none of them compared with the Shemika. These are incredible. If you are looking to get into watercolor, I can say these are really amazing. And I know there are other good, good brands out there, but from my own experience, I can definitely recommend these. Everything is a muddy mess at this point. And that is okay because we're going to fix all of that with the colored pencil. And I had the same challenge with the fox. I really wanted to keep adding more and more detail and I had to stop myself. I mean, even as I'm doing those lines with the watercolor, I was wasting time. The colored pencil is just easier to do that with, to work with a, a ruler and get straight lines. Now, as I come through here on the chair, I don't need these to be perfectly straight either because that's another area. I can use a ruler and my colored pencils to make that way easier. So just layering in base layers here. I don't need this color to be perfect. I just need some pigment there so that when I go on top with the water or the colored pencil, I've got these dark areas showing through the white pencils that I plan to put on top. And you can make, you could do this entire thing with, with just watercolor and have the end result look pretty much exactly like what I ended up with, with going on top with the colored pencils. My point in mixing these two was really just to save time. Each medium has pros and cons, so I can take advantage of that here. Now, as you look around the feet, as that blends in with the chair, everything is really, really dark. And that's how it was on my reference photo, very dark. You really couldn't define where each paw started and ended. And that is something that I wanted to include in my artwork here. It's common to want to try to force detail you can't see. Now, maybe if he was in a lighter area, that would make sense. But here, I'm going for this darker, more grungy feel. I wanted everything to be very, very dark. And I'm going to go around everything later on and, and outline stuff with black so I have a more graphic feel than I typically go with. So there was no reason and no benefit to me trying to force the detail I couldn't see in that photo in the, the pause there. So you can see everything is just very, very shadowed. I will come back through and add a little bit like the hint of where the top of a paw would be but we're not going to spend a bunch of time putting tons of detail in that area if something is in shadows you can leave that in shadows don't try to force detail that's not there now that doesn't mean just go choose terrible reference photos where you can't see anything that's not what i'm talking about what i'm talking about there is if something fades into shadow it oftentimes is going to look best if you let it fade into shadow in your artwork as well I'm using white gouache for my highlights here. So gouache, that is essentially just opaque watercolor. It's still going to lift like watercolor will. The difference is that it is, is opaque where the watercolor is very translucent. So white gouache is my best friend. It's not something that a lot of traditional watercolorists like, but I am definitely not a traditional watercolorist, so that is what I'm going with there. Now we're going to go ahead and start with the colored pencil. I'm using a lot of purple. Anytime I draw an animal, so in this case a fox or let's say a tiger where I've got the orange, that reddish brown tone, I am going to use magentas and purples a lot. Don't always jump to black as being your shadow color. Now in this case, I actually am using a lot of black to get that more graphic feel, but normally I'm going to use, as you're seeing here, a lot of the violets and magentas. Now, another thing that I'm having to do is pull some of that teal background into the subject. So that is being used on the door as well, but it needs to be brought into the chair and into the fox so that those two feel like they're apart, like everything goes together. Everything is a part of the same scene. I showed you in the beginning the three different reference photos I used. They don't go together at all. So when you do combine multiple photos, you need to make sure they fit. And one of the easiest things to do is whatever colors you're using in your background, you need to pull that into your main subjects. And that's going to help them all feel like they are a part of the same scene not like you copied and pasted them together like what I actually did you can see a lot of the magentas purples in there I am blending this with odorless mineral spirits so this is a pretty cool thing odorless mineral spirits don't really reactivate 
or affect watercolor very much. If I had gone over and tried to blend that with watercolor, that will lift the or water, that will lift the watercolor up. But with the OMS, mo for the most part, the watercolor stays put. It doesn't really shift. It doesn't do a whole lot. So I'm able to go on top with the colored pencil and blend the colored pencil with OMS without smudging the watercolor base. If you are using Inktense as your base, you're also going to be able to use OMS without impacting that, just because that wasn't going to move either way. You can see I've got a bit more of that magenta, or not magenta, I don't know my colors, that aqua color, you're starting to see me pull that into the chair now too. So we'll work on the door. I really wanna get a very gritty look. I am not going to go crazy trying to blend every pencil mark like I normally might with the colored pencil because I want this rough, grainy, gritty look for that door. I want it to look really old, very aged, not taken care of. And I'm using a combination of black. I'm using black a lot more than I normally would. If I wanted this to be more realistic, I would be going more with tans and, and violets, uh, purples, not, not so much with the black. But here, going back to my goal of having this have that more graphic feel, I am going really heavy with my black pencil. For the most part, I'm using my Polychromos Black and the Derwent Lightfast Black pencil. For this piece, I used a combination of Derwent Lightfast, Faber-Castell Polychromos, Caran d'Ache Luminance, and Derwent Drawing Pencils. I've got those all, everything I've used is listed in the video description. But I used all of those colors partially. If, I, if The color that I chose would be dependent on, do I want a more opaque pencil or do I want a more translucent layer where I'm getting more of a glaze? That would be then, if I want more translucent, I'm gonna go with the oil-based polychromos. If I want something more opaque, I'm gonna shift to a higher wax content pencil. And then sometimes I'm just choosing the pencil based on that's the color I want. Now it looks like I'm making this super, super white. I'm actually gonna go over this with a lot of brown and there is brown here. My camera is overexposing those whites like crazy there. But I'm gonna go over it with tans and browns to make that white look more aged, like it's been sitting there for quite a few years. Remember when you're doing anything with white, white is not usually white. It's going to be reflective of the colors around it. Keep your brightest whites normally for, unless you're going for something more graphic, but normally you're gonna keep your brightest whites just for the bright highlights. Everything else you wanna to tone down and let it reflect what's around it. Starting to clean up some of those edges on the writing. You can see I've taken a lot of the brown pencil and black and made vertical lines going down where the spray paint is. So it looks like that wood is starting to crack. That was something that is definitely easier to do with the colored pencil than it would have been with the watercolor. I just keep reworking and keeping things very grungy looking on that door. Don't overblend it. I have a couple of times definitely overblended and had to go back over it to cre create more of that texture. And there is my finished painting. If you are supporters at the Aqua Tier or higher over on Patreon, you've got the, the coloring page available. You can go download that now. And I do have prints available of this one over in my print shop. Links to everything are in the video description. Hey, get off the furniture. No, this is my chair. Sign says freedom. I have freedom to sit. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, YouTube may or may not notify you when I have a new video go live. So make sure you hit the bell notification icon. Please hit the like button. It makes me feel happy and gooey inside. And you can sign up for my email newsletter. Link is in the video description.